When Charles Leclerc joined the Ferrari Formula 1 team after his highly impressive stint at Sauber in 2018, most people knew ahead of his debut with the Scuderia that he was Ferrari's new superstar after the failures of 2017 and 2018 where Sebastian Vettel and team failed to capture a championship that led to Vettel's popularity beginning to decrease. And immediately we began in 2019 to see signs of just how great Leclerc could be with a few great pole positions and a couple special race wins. The next couple years would be rough for the team which allowed Leclerc to mature and continue his impressive development into one of the premier drivers in Formula 1. Once 2022 arrived and Ferrari arrived back to being a front-running team, Charles Leclerc started the year driving at an immensely high level with his stunning qualifying pace seeing him rack up a number of pole positions. Despite that though, Ferrari resorted to their default and old pastime of finding new innovative ways of losing race wins leading to them being beaten for the year's world championships before we got to the summer break. And with Ferrari continuing on with their seemingly never-ending insanity, I will in this video cover why Charles Leclerc should leave Ferrari when his contract ends at the end of 2024. Before though I explain my reasons, first guys make sure to hit the like button for this video if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and also give me a comment down below also in regards to the topic of today's video. So now we'll get into it and start with Ferrari who continue to remind us what the definition of insanity is as the first reason Leclerc should look elsewhere. Ferrari as we know are currently on what is soon to be a 15 year title drought but have had multiple chances to break this drought or the Timo Glock curse. Now we know the individual mistakes that have cost them over the years whether it be drivers, mechanics or strategists but there are bigger reasons behind this failure. Striving to win and doing everything in your power legally to win is normally what the very top performing sports teams or organisations do. Now if we look at as an example the greatest team assembled in F1 history Mercedes and the Ferrari team of the early 2000s what these two teams did and what most great teams have done is go out find and hire the best personnel possible especially for the most important positions within the team. If we look at the dominant Ferrari team of 20 years ago they had Jean Tot as team principal hired in 1993 after guiding Peugeot to the World Rally Championship twice, a World Sports Car Championship once and a team that won the Le Mans 24 hours race twice all as a manufacturer. They hired Ross Braun, a fantastic F1 engineer and technical director of the Benetton team that had just won championships before his hiring in 1997, with Benetton car designer from the same period Rory Byrne also joining. And then they had the cherry on top being the best driver in the world at the time, Michael Schumacher, who was hired for 1996. And if you look at Mercedes, despite being a German team, decided to hire the best they could find. But firstly, needed to keep Ross Braun at the team from the team they bought, Braun GP, to really get the success going a few years later. And have over the years had some amazing technical engineers and designers such as James Allison, Paddy Lowe, Aldo Costa who used to work at Ferrari during the glory years. They went out and got a driver who has turned into the greatest of all time and already talent wise was one of the best in the world and were able to train up Austrian Toto Wolf in the art of championship success. His training has gone very well as since the beginning of their dominance Toto has grown into an excellent team boss and arguably the best on the grid. And we're not even counting other great engineers such as Andy Cowell who was responsible for the Mercedes power unit that delivered the team domination and he came from a background of engine design and development in F1 for the last 15 years previous to that with manufacturers such as BMW, Cosworth and Mercedes. The point I am ultimately trying to make with Ferrari is that they do not and have not for a while search for and hire the best engineers, designers, strategists and team bosses possible for the most important positions. The reason they don't pursue excellence is because their approach of employment is looking for homegrown talent rather than trying to go out for the best of the best. Examples can be seen in Tot, Braun and Rory Burns' direct replacements about 15 years ago being 
Domenicali, Baldessari, and Costa, who were all good, but not good enough. And this trend has only continued as they have had Italian-only team bosses ever since 2008, and their main technical and engineering department has very rarely seen a non-Italian since their last championship. Don't get me wrong, there is a host of good Italian engineers and designers inside Formula 1. This is not to bash them, but only to point out that this method just isn't working and won't work out for them, period. It is essentially like a big football club deciding that the vast majority of their playing staff will only be from the academy, which for certain clubs has worked, but the harsh reality is this type of strategy is still quite unlikely to be successful and leads to a lowering of standards which has happened at ferrari for the past 15 years this lowering of standards at the end of the day has led to poorer trackside and operational performance poorer cars being produced and designed by the team poor car development and that has all led to their drought Obviously, in 2010, we all know what caused the championship to be lost. But in 2012, a poor car and poorly developed car was somehow still up for contention for the championship due to Fernando Alonso's amazing driving that year. But the championship was still lost despite Alonso having a 39-point lead with seven races to go. Yes, his retirement at Suzuka was costly, but what was also costly was that Ferrari produced a dog shit car for the first half of the season that Fernando had to produce miracles in to even be in that position. Fernando deserved better. In 2017, Ferrari's next chance came up and it was looking very good for them after race six of the season with Sebastian Vettel having a 25 point lead over Lewis Hamilton in a Ferrari car that was much better than years previous but the car never seemed to get any better plus two big errors from Vettel killed their hopes. 2018 was even worse as yet again they had a great car a great chance at championship success yet let Mercedes off the hook big time. The amount of front row lockouts pole positions race winning positions they threw away was sickening then added the cherry on top of poor car development to end all hope they once had. Sebastian definitely contributed to the overall failure, but his team was as solid as a chocolate fire guard in providing support. And Ferrari in 2022 have repeated the same old mistakes from failures past, which is why after half a season, Leclerc finds himself in his current predicament. And that now leads me on to the second reason he should depart the always sinking ship of Ferrari, which is that he deserves better given that Leclerc has delivered exactly what you would ask of him. When the car has been quick enough to achieve pole position, he is almost every time delivered. When the car has been quick enough to win races, he has delivered the performance necessary almost every time, only to be robbed by his own team. And when you look at his season so far, if you take out the mistake he made at Imola, he has been flawless and has done realistically, given that nobody is perfect, the best possible job he could have done so far this season. But despite getting pole position at well over 50% of the races this season, he is miles behind in the title race. Now, if a team was performing pretty much flawlessly and giving a driver everything needed to win races and a championship, but the driver blew a few big chances to achieve the desired target and performed at a level not good enough for the top level of motorsport, we would all be rightfully so calling for the head of the driver. Charles Leclerc has fulfilled his end of the bargain. It's about time Ferrari do, but of course it's Ferrari. A broken clock is right twice a day in Maranello. And the final reason Leclerc should leave is because he deserves, given his talent and skill, to become one of the Formula 1 greats and win world championships, which is something Ferrari are not going to do anytime soon. If you actually compare Leclerc to Max Verstappen this season and look at their performances, Max, I would say, has been great. But honestly, I think Leclerc has been the better driver that has just been handicapped by his team. The races this year where Max was the better performer was probably Imola and Miami, when at every other race Leclerc was performing, I think, at a better level than Max was. But most of the time, there was an if or a but. Charles Leclerc would have won the Spanish Grand Prix if 
his engine didn't fail. Charles Leclerc would have won the Monaco Grand Prix if Inaki Rueda learnt anything about strategy. Charles Leclerc probably would have won the Canadian Grand Prix given the race pace Ferrari had, but he had to start at the back for taking on a completely new power unit. And the longer Leclerc is at Ferrari, then that will always be the legacy of this partnership. Leclerc will always be in great positions through his hard work, talent and the pace of the car, but there will always be a reason that it ends in disaster. Charles Leclerc has the ability to win, I think, probably two or three world championships in his career, but that is only if he decides to leave Ferrari. The decision he needs to make is, for me, pretty simple. Does he want to end up like Jean Alesi, a driver amazingly fast and talented, but never had a prayer of winning a title due to the incompetence of Ferrari, or end up like Fernando Alonso, a man who gave everything, poured his heart and soul into his Ferrari career, yet ended up with nothing? Or does he want to take a leap of faith that Lewis Hamilton did, for example, in 2012, that transformed his career and gave Lewis exactly what he deserved? Become just another great Ferrari driver without a championship or become one of the all-time greats? I know exactly what I would do. Loyalty at the end of the day only gets you so far. The ambition to do anything and take any decision to win gets you much further. But do you guys believe Charles Leclerc should leave Ferrari or stay with the prancing horse? Let me know in the comments section down below. And until my next video or stream, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.